Hi everybody, this is Jeremy Moskowitz, Group Policy MVP and founder of Policy Pack Software. And uh, my friends at Trade and Signal uh, grabbed me by the ear. They said, you gotta show this to our friends and viewers and stuff, and I'm happy to bring this to you. So let's, let's set the stage about what we're about to see and, and why you should care. I mean, a lot of folks now are being, in, you know, being told they have to uh, support this idea of bring your own device or BYOD to work. And I know what a huge pain in the neck that can be. You, know, you don't know if they're bringing in like an iPhone or an iPad or a tablet computer. You don't know what's around the bend even. So, uh, or you know, whatever, whatever's next, basically. And uh, so what I've got here, and I'm about to show you, is, uh, well, I don't have a real iPad. I have a fake iPad. And so uh, you, you just have to play pretend with me. I hope that'll be okay. And on my fake iPad, you know that if you use like a VDI-based solution to remotely give somebody an entire desktop environment, well, you have to support the applications. Now, getting those applications on those target computers, uh, really those target VDI sessions, is, is kind of like what you know, what actually happens from, from third-party vendors. Uh, Microsoft, Citrix, and VMware all have solutions around VDI. But, uh, you know, this is what, when I showed my friends at TrainSignal, uh, they kind of fell over, which was that they're missing the last mile. And that's what I wanted to show you. So if you've got a Windows 7 rollout planned, or if you've got VDI around the edges, uh, kind of getting warmed up, uh, if you've got desktops and laptops, or even terminal server, uh, like I said, when I show my friends at uh, Train Signal, they uh, they wanted me to show you too. So here's the good news: everything I'm about to show you is actually absolutely free up to a point. Okay, so there's a free edition of Policy Pack of Policy Pack Professional, and there's a pay edition. But uh, the kind of stuff I'm going to show you here is actually uh, it's free up to a point, and you can find out more about what's free and what's not on the website. So let me go ahead and get started here. Okay, so here is my fake uh, my fake iPad. As you can see, it's got the fake little iPad background. And you can see here, I've got my real applications here. I've got my Adobe Reader, I've got my Firefox, and I've got my WinZip. So uh, again, we're pretending that this is like an iPad that actually is using a VDI session with one of those three vendors to remotely give access to, uh, to our Windows desktop. So in this case, let me go ahead and run WinZip as an application. Right away, the user gets kind of a crappy experience, as you can see here. They, they sort of instantly get a pop-up asking them a question. They don't know what to do, and, and, and that's what we're going to talk about. And we just sort of want to get rid of all the, the fuzzy edges around the user's experience when they get new applications and get a new uh, laptop, desktop, or VDI session. So if we go to Options Config here, we'll see that there's, well, actually a lot of settings for a user to screw up. And I happen to be using these three applications is sort of like my baseline. I've got WinZip, I've got Firefox, and I've got Acrobat Reader. But actually, you could think of these as any application you have to deploy. Now, if you have corporate IT settings that you want to make sure that your users can't work around, as a lot of you know, I'm a Group Policy MVP, and man, I love Group Policy, but it just doesn't do what it's supposed to do for the actual applications on your machine. It does a great job for the stuff in the box, but it kind of falls apart for the actual applications on your machine, and that's what we're going to see. So here you can see I've got uh, this password section, this passwords tab, and on the passwords tab, there's um, some security settings. And I'm using WinZip, and you know we might not think of WinZip as a big security app, but you can think of any application that you have as you know uh, comparable. In other words, some application you have has security, and how are you going to dictate that security to that application. So here uh, we've, got, we've got WinZip just waiting to be configured, unfortunately. And we can see here we've got the Cameras tab. And man, we, we don't use cameras at our company, so maybe we'll make sure that the Cameras tab is locked out. So let's go ahead and get started with this first directive and initiative. And the best part is, is that uh, Policy Pack, like I said, hooks right into your Group Policy engine because I love Group Policy. So we're going to create a new GPO called Lockdown WinZip here. And I'll go ahead and edit this guy here. I'll just right click there. And uh, here we go. You'll see that I've got uh, the built in policies, the built in preferences, and now Policy Pack. So, Policy Pack applications is a, is a new node that just will snap right into the GPMC. It comes part of, the, part of what you get. And Policy Pack actually ships with 35 pre configured applications that lots and lots of folks really want to get delivered. Like, I know a lot of folks are using Acrobat Reader, which we're about to cover. Java, you want to make the Java pop ups go away. You've got Firefox. We're going to show how to configure Firefox in this little video. That's right. I, when I've shown some people that they can actually configure Firefox uh, using Group Policy, their head has popped right off. So I'll show you that. So let's go right to WinZip right here. And I'll double click on that. And 
look at that. It looks exactly like the actual application we want to configure. So if we kind of hustle over to passwords here, let's go ahead and bump up the minimum password length to 11, thus making this actual application more secure. And again, you can think of this as any application you have that needs increased security. Or I'll just, I'll click on all these checkboxes, and that's cool. I'm delivering the setting. But we're going to go one big step greater, and we're going to actually lock the setting down so a user can't work around it. So let me go ahead for, um, for this uh, middle checkbox here, this third checkbox here, and I'm going to hide the corresponding setting in the target application. I'm literally going to uh, remove it so that it's not available for the user at all to screw up. And I'll do the same thing for the last checkbox, except I'm going to disable the corresponding control in the target application. And, and what the heck, I'll do the same thing for minimum password length as well. I'll, I'll really crank that guy down and really make sure that user can't work around it. Remember cameras, we don't want to use cameras at our company, so I'll right click and I'll disable the whole tab in the target application. So that's it, it's as simple as that. We've got these pre-configured packs ready to rock. You just go on to your new VDI session. Uh, you can log off or log back on. In this case, I'm running GP update. That's gonna get me the latest, greatest group policy settings. And uh, well, let's go ahead and see uh, what happens. All right, only took a second. So now what we'll do is we'll go ahead and run WinZip. And let's check it out as, uh, as this user. Now again, uh, if the user is running as a standard user or as an admin user, we want to make sure that they're locked down. So let's go to Options Config. Let's take a look at Passwords and look at that. You can see right there that all four checkboxes are checked. One of them is completely missing, which is what we said, and one is grayed out, and that 11 guy, uh, or that minimum password length is jammed up to 11. That's pretty cool, because now there's no way for a user to kind of work around our settings uh, for the things that we set. A and cameras, you can't click on cameras at all. So what I want to show next is uh, what happens if you go offline, okay? So if you've got a standard desktop or a standard laptop, or you're running a, one of those VDI, uh, uh, VDI sessions that you can take offline with you, what happens if the user works around your setting? Well, if you just run GP Update and you don't have access to the domain controller, well, the GP Update is just going to fall over and die. Well, now you just saw me uncheck those two checkboxes, but it turns out Policy Pack has a secret weapon. And this, again, is all in the box in both the free version and the pay version. You can just run PP Update, and boom, it took zero seconds, and it will re-deliver those settings just like that. Let me go to Options Config, head on over there, boom. Those checkboxes that were checked are now, or unchecked rather, are now checked. So you can keep your corporate and IT settings delivered and maintained even when you're offline. Let's, uh, let's go through another example real quick here. Let me, uh, let me show you another one that is like constantly on people's minds, which is the security of the actual applications like Acrobat Reader. I'm sure you got the same, uh, same kind of memo I did, which is that this, this JavaScript thing, this is enable Acrobat JavaScript. If it's checked on, which is the default, by the way, if uh, some secretary double clicks a PDF that's infected, what's going to happen? They're going to blast infection to the rest of their team. You don't want that. So what are you going to do? Make 500 phone calls asking the secretaries or the other members of your uh, world to uncheck the checkbox? No way. You're going to use the power of group policy to deliver that setting and then also lock it down so users can't work around it. And that's what we're going to do right now. We're going to make your world more secure just like that. So let's go ahead. We'll go back over to the group policy editor. We'll right click new application and we'll go ahead and we'll pick Acrobat uh, reader, and again, you can see we've got a whole lot of uh, application pre-configured packs uh, ready to go. But we're going to pick Acrobat Reader, or Adobe Reader X rather, and we'll go over right to the JavaScript guy, uncheck that enable Adobe JavaScript, right click over it and disable that guy, and we'll go ahead and click OK, locking and loading that directive right into group policy land. So again, the very next time a user runs GP update or logs off or logs back on, they magically get the settings. So let's run GP update and see what happens. All right, let's go ahead and head over to Adobe Reader. Go right to Edit Preferences. Remember, that checkbox was checked, and uh, we don't want that. So if we go look at that, we can see right there it's unchecked and it's grayed out. So the best part is this stuff doesn't just work for your desktops and laptops, which you have a lot of them. It also works for those kinds of things we were just talking about, having you know iPads and tablets. And actually, it also works for environments like this. This environment, which is another PC here, is uh, actually using uh, Citrix terminal server style stuff. So if you just click on, uh, let's see, here we go. I've got WinZip. Here we go, WinZip published. So this is coming from my Citrix server. So all I got to do is 
log on, run it, and the Citrix server will get the same signal that the desktop does to restrict that application, lock it down exactly the way you expect. So you can see the application is uh, starting up right here. And as soon as it's done, the application will be presented from the server over to the workstation. But the best part is the, the workstation, or if it's a thin box, or if it's a terminal, or if it's a tablet, or anything like that, as soon as it uh, gets, as soon as that application is started, it's going to have the actual application locked down and ready to rock. All right, so there's WinZip started from our Citrix machine. If we go to Options Config, go over to Passwords, boom, there it is. So you can see this application doesn't actually live on our machine at all. It's actually installed over there on the terminal server. Uh, and PolicyPack can do the exact same thing for your uh, virtualized application. So if you've got ThinApp from VMware, if you've got uh, Citrix Streaming, or if you have Microsoft AppV, we can deliver the settings inside your virtual applications and lock it down. I, I think that's all we have time for today. I know I chewed your ear off. We got a lot of stuff on the website. I'd love to see you come to one of my uh, hour-long weekly webinars on Policy Pack. And if you do, we'll uh, hand over the bits and you can play with it yourself and see if it's right for you. But we have a lot of folks who uh, think it's great. My friends at Train Signal saw this and they fell over and uh, said you have to show this to, uh, to our friends. And I'm really glad they did. So thank you very much for having me here. Appreciate it.